Have you ever heard of the John Birch Society? It is one of the biggest influences that propelled the far right into mainstream American politics. In fact, most of the Republican Party's craziest conspiracies started with the John Birch Society. The War on Christmas, John Birch Society. Shadowy cabal running our government, John Birch Society. Orchestrated panic over school boards, John Birch Society. You could make an entire season of television about the influence of the John Birchers and still not even scratch the surface. But I think it's important to point out how Bircher conspiracies and tactics persist to this day, upholding the entire right-wing media ecosystem. Neo-Nazi Nick Fuentes said this yesterday about the John Birch Society. And they're talking about the John Birch Society, which is sort of the prelude to the Groypers. Bircher influence is ubiquitous in conservative media. You can find it in everything from radio to blogs. Alex Jones was raised on Bircher literature. Even though the corporate founders are long dead, the John Birch Society message lives on, being broadcast almost verbatim into millions of homes every single day on Fox News, the most watched cable news channel in the country. Now, the John Birch Society was founded in 1958 by candy magnate Robert Welch. A rabid anti-communist, Welch proposed a secret meeting in Indianapolis, all very cloak and dagger, to 17 business colleagues. 11 of them showed up, making for a total of 12 founders. Fun fact, one of those men was Fred Koch, the father of the Koch brothers. Welch spent two days with them, detailing a mass communist plot cinched in the stink of the New Deal and global cooperation. Over his lifetime, Welch would be known for his paranoia about this secret communist cabal. He accused tons of high-ranking American officials of being a part of it, including Dwight Eisenhower, the President of the United States. Dwight Eisenhower, the guy who helped Allied forces win World War II. Dwight Eisenhower, the guy who has a doctrine against communism with his name on it. Now, a lot of Republicans at the time recognized the John Birch Society as deranged and toxic, but that didn't really matter because the John Birch Society was so good at getting its message out. So good, in fact, that it persists to this day. So let's talk about the conspiracy that propelled them into the public eye, that Dwight Eisenhower was a communist. This is just patently untrue. Like, I can't think of a less true thing to say. But that didn't stop the Birchers, because who cares about facts? The most devoted of them committed themselves to the idea, even though mainstream politicians and media outlets either denounced or ignored them. That was in the late 60s. And now you can find this crap on the most watched cable news channel in the country. Here's Fox News talking about the president of the United States, Joseph Biden, in 2021. In a set of prepared remarks, this wasn't off the cuff, better suited for a despotic socialist dictator, frankly. And 2022. Joe Biden's Justice Department is imprisoning people for having the wrong thoughts. And 2023. When Joe Biden likens you to Al Qaeda, or the Klan, it's not a small thing at all. It has implications. It's not even controversial to say that the president wants to cause the downfall of America. That's just an average Tuesday for us now. And of course, it wasn't just Eisenhower. John F. Kennedy was in on it too. Check out this pamphlet Birchers handed out before JFK visited Dallas. Yeah, the trip where he was assassinated. The flyer insisted that the president was guilty of treason. And some of his crimes sound oddly familiar, betraying the constitution. Joe, before you rip up that document called the Constitution. Supporting communist racial riots. Antifa, Black Lives Matter, 500 riots over the last three years. Defund the police. That's not America. That's chaos. And that's exactly what Joe Biden is doing. Lying about his love life. The Biden's affection is totally real. It's in no way part of a slick PR campaign devised by cynical consultants determined to hide the president's senility by misdirection. <laughs> Not at all. Their love is as real as climate change. Now, Welch and the Bircher's definition of communism was pretty broad, applying it to anything that didn't fit their warped perspective. But accusing the president of the United States of being some dirty commie globalist, that's nuts. I know I have to remind you, but like that's actually nuts. And we're ju that's just normal now. That's nuts. Most Republicans thought so too, or at least they didn't publicly agree. Being associated with conspiracy theories like this was a negative back then. But Berger's pushed that narrative so persistently for so long that we don't even blink. And when it comes to rhetoric surrounding schools, the John Birch Society and Fox News are nearly indistinguishable. Even before he founded the society, Robert Welch was saying that parents had a right to stand up against teachers indoctrinating their students with socialism. Where have I heard that before? 
We have been under a multi-generational, um, you know, very patient, very potent indoctrination program by the left. Birchers also considered sex education a communist plot. So we talk about the problem where it started with sex ed, gender theory, we get into unions and, and the education mafia. And often complain that textbooks weren't patriotic enough. The U.S. is losing its grip on its superpower status in part because of the wokeification of our military and the destruction of patriotic education in our schools. These ideas were and are commonplace on the right, but the Birchers brought it into the mainstream. They had so many avenues to enlist new members. Opposition to desegregation, to McCarthyist panic, to the mid-century version of an anti-woke crusade. And because those ideas weren't yet mainstream, the John Birch Society had the idea to encourage its members to join their local PTA or run for school board. This led to controversies that look eerily similar to today. In the 60s, a Montana school district decided to replace Bibles that were in poor condition with new ones. They were trying to figure out disposal and a local minister said it would be okay to burn them. Of course, it doesn't matter why, the Birchers latched on. The Birchers were so aggressive that the school principal actually contacted one of Montana's senators. The principal was hoping to find more information if there was a Bircher plan because he thought that they were going to use the PTA to infiltrate the school. He was right on that count, but the full plan is so much worse. The Birchers wanted to establish committees to make sure there wasn't any subversive material in textbooks and that the library didn't have any socialist books, by the Birchers' definition, of course. And even though the school board rejected these anti-education campaigns, the Birchers still pretty much got their way. They stalked the district superintendent, making menacing calls and trashing his house until he eventually resigned. Within just a few years, the district lost 16 of its 23 teachers, about 70% of K-12 educators. And of course, the LGBTQ community wasn't safe from the John Birchers either. Regular Birch Society lecturer Tim LaHaye sought to ban queer people from teaching in schools. His reason? Family values. You might recognize that line of thinking. So if there was ever an effort to destroy the nuclear family this obvious, we're not aware of what it might be. And the list of Bircher conspiracies that continue to this day is seemingly endless. Bircher conspiracies about fluoride mirror current COVID and vaccine denialism. Vaccines and boosters do not work as they have told us. In 1970, Birchers handed out a phony communist dossier called Rules for Revolution, trying to scare people about the communist agenda. Here's Fox News on Friday pushing an alleged Antifa riot poster that still hasn't been authenticated. Have you heard anything about Antifa thus far tonight? I know there's a flyer circulating in New York City put out by Antifa to bring rocks, to bring pipes, to bring box cutters there. You're showing it right there. And I mentioned this in a video before, but Robert Welch invented the war on Christmas. He insisted that globalists were trying to replace Christmas decorations with United Nations insignia. And even though it's been over 60 years, the battle is still alive and well. Last night, the first shots were fired in the war on Christmas in a small town called Dedham, Massachusetts. Like I said, there are so many parallels and overlap that it's quite literally impossible to fully cover any part of the John Birch Society's impact in a single video. But I do think it's important to note that they have a tight grip on the most watched cable news channel in the country. You probably have a parent or grandparent or sibling or coworker that regularly watches Fox News, and this is what they are ingesting. John Birch Society conspiracy theories. One of the main sources I use for this video is Birchers by Matthew Dalek. He was kind enough to get me a copy before it comes out in March. It's an incredible book. Dalek makes some great connections between Birchers and Alex Jones, Republican politicians, QAnon, Tucker Carlson. Can't recommend it enough. If you're interested in learning more about the John Birch Society, I will have Dalek's book as well as some other great resources linked on my Twitter. I watch conservatives for work, but I make fun of them for pleasure. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok.